What do you suppose Rex Hurman's first words were to the police when he was arrested? What's going on? What are you doing? You got the wrong guy? I mean, those are the things I would say. <laughs> I'm not a serial killer, and I don't know if he is. But he did not ask about any victims. He did not ask about his own wife and kids. He did not ask about victims' families. He didn't ask about his career being ruined. He didn't ask about being cuffed. His actual words to the arresting officers while he was being processed, according to CNN, was, is it in the news? Is it in the news? Uh, yes, Mr. Hurman, it is in the news. In fact, you're the subject of almost this entire program tonight and last night and just about everybody else's programs and papers, etc. So if he is guilty of these horrendous murders, this is what uh, the experts call zero empathy. Criminal psychologists say that a lot of serial killers have some form of narcissism. Um, let me go over some of the things that have been said in the past by some serial killers and suspects in horrendous murders. Let's start with Brian Koberger. When he was arrested last December, he asked if anyone else was arrested. That was one of the first things he said in that jail where he was being processed in Pennsylvania. Uh, BTK, Dennis Rader, he asked a police uh, lieutenant who caught him, how come you lied to me? I think he was incensed that somebody would dare to lie to him, be dishonest with him. But the lieutenant answered, because I was trying to catch you. Makes sense. Uh, John Wayne Gacy, the filthy, foul, serial-killing clown, uh, countless men and boys uh, buried him in his basement. Just before his arrest, he actually was recorded on surveillance tape telling investigators, and I'll quote Gacy, you know clowns can get away with murder. But apparently they can't. And here are some not so profound statements from other killers. Joseph D'Angelo, the Golden State Killer, who we were just talking about with Gay Hardwick, uh, responsible for 13 murders and 51 rapes, told the police who came to his house in 2018 to arrest him that he had a roast in the oven. And the police said they'd take care of it. David Berkowitz, the son of Sam, terrorized New York area back in 1976 through 77, murdering eight victims, said to the police while smiling, well, you got me. I want to bring in forensic psychologist Chris Mohandi. Um, you know, Chris, what does it say to you when you hear the first words out of Rex Hurman's mouth were, is it in the news? Well, what you're not hearing is any, like you said, protests of why am I being arrested, anything like that. It's almost like he's accepting the premise of being arrested. Putting that issue aside, uh, you know, it's, it's about him and wanting to know you know, whether he's out there, that could be because of narcissistic needs. That is, uh, you know, an ego that needs to be stroked, the hunger for notoriety. It could also be a practical matter of him wanting to potentially, you know, know if his family and other people that he knows know about this yet. Um, but I lean more towards the notoriety and, you know, maybe some sort of secondary enjoyment at being the center of attention. Um, a center of attention that if he is indeed guilty, uh, was achieved earlier anonymously uh, through a series of crimes, you know, and now unmasked, you know, uh, the opportunity exists, you know, to be out center and front and, and claim credit for them publicly, uh, if indeed he is the offender. If he's guilty, and I wondered if the concern, and I'll give him the benefit of the doubt here, was about his family knowing, or whether he could call them and tell them before it's in the news, but, but who knows, maybe it was the, the hubris. I do want to ask you about a phone call that um, Dominique Vidal has released on social media. She was in a networking group alongside Rex Hewerman, and she dropped out of the networking group, but she got this phone call back in February. And the reason I say that date, Chris, is because this call came in in February, but a task force had been ignited to really supercharge the investigation last year. So here he is calling Dominique Vidal, and let me play the call for you. Have a listen. Thank you. Hey, this is Rex um, from the BNI group. I, I actually heard you are no longer part of the group, but I still wanted to talk to you. I had a question for you. Um, I also wanted to touch base. So if you get an opportunity, you can always try me at the office. Or feel free to use my cell. Mine. 
Uh, hope you're doing good. Hope to talk to you soon. Thanks. So, Chris, I don't know if this was a legitimate networking call. She wasn't in the network anymore, and she's a very, very young and very pretty uh, young woman. It made me wonder if there is absolute shock that, perhaps, if he's guilty, that he was caught, meaning operating with impunity. Task force launches still calling sex workers, still calling women like this. Well, it certainly, uh, you know, is something... I would be surprised if his wife knew about the call, and it certainly is consistent with possible double life, you know, kinds of behavior. You know, is he putting overtures out there hoping that uh, she'll take the bait and that there maybe can be some sort of clandestine relationship? That's where my, you know, thought process goes, you know, in terms of, you know, this is a guy potentially opportunistic, you know, looking to, you know, do whatever he wants when he wants, if indeed it's him. Uh, that would be what I would be, you know, hypothesizing, if you will. But, uh, yeah, it, it certainly seems potentially inappropriate. Yes, is there an innocent explanation, you know, searching uh, to make sure, checking in on somebody that was part of your network, but, I don't know, sort of looks like a, uh, an invitation of sorts. Sure does to me, too. Chris Mohandi, forensic psychologist, thank you so much for being on the program. I always look forward to our conversations, and I'll look forward to our next one, too. Thanks, Ashley. Me too. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.